It's the annual battle between Clarkston and Lake Orion. And what's more exciting, it falls on homecoming. We've got it all for you here on Orion Neighborhood Television and on the NFHS streaming service. Pre-game is underwritten by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art collision and repair facility. Located at 3800 South Lapeer Road, or give them a call at 248-393-2222. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Corliss, joined again, finally, Made it back. by Chris Frischink. Glad to have you back, partner. Thank you. It is homecoming week. There's a lot going on. You, had, you can't tell. Yeah, can you? The, the stands are crowded. Traffic is worse than it usually right, is. Right. And there's a lot for these players. We talk about it every year. These players are around all this. Tomorrow's the PEP, or today was the PEP assembly. Coach Bell does a masterful job of keeping these players focused and on point. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, they say it's homecoming week, and it is. But I think to you and I, to the coaches, to the players, it's Lake Orion Clarkston week. It just happens to be on the same time, same date, same week that homecoming is as well. Um, these are two schools that have played each other 59 times, more than any other school each other, each team has played. And so, and seemingly every time they play, there is something on the line. Uh, tonight, what's on the line really, uh, with Oxford winning last night, uh, Clarkson has a chance to win or a share of the OAA red title. And so, um, but really for both teams, it's about earning playoff points, which are so critical as they work through the seedings in the next 16 days or so in the Division One playoffs. And so, uh, you're right, going back to what you said about Coach Bell and the focus on, on the homecoming, um, the focus, I, when it's all said and done, I think, is on Lake Orion Clarkston for that coaching staff, and there's no question that Coach Bell and the staff will have them ready. Yeah. Clarkston comes in, they lost to Belleville in week one. Like everyone else, they're four and two coming into tonight. When I looked at their roster in preseason and as they started out, I saw a lot of underclassmen on it. I thought this is a rebuild year for Clarkston. But Co Coach Pinter has done an excellent job of getting this team to play good, solid football. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it just it's part of that tradition that they have there at Clarkson too, right? I mean, they're most definitely in this race, and like I said earlier, if they win tonight, they got a share of the OAA red. But but I saw them last week against Troy Athens, and and, and Troy Athens is in the blue, and and you know they're struggling this year at two and five. But you know I was impressed with them. Um, it, they they're four and two. You said they lost to Belleville, they lost to Rochester Adams in week four. Um, but you know what? They've only beaten one team with a winning record, and that's Oxford. And so keep that in mind. Uh, they've got great talent. Uh, the Bowman brothers, Griffin and Lucas, are, are good on both sides of the football. You're going to hear us calling their names all night long. They've got a good wide receiving core. Uh, and they got a sophomore quarterback that uh, I was really impressed with. He's poised. He's, he's, he's comfortable back there. And so uh, it's going to be interesting to watch his growth over over, over the course of the next uh, couple years for that program. But they're not as big up front offensively and defense at line wise as they've been in years past. Uh, nonetheless, um, they're a good team, solid team on both offense, defense, and special teams. When we were putting together our pregame thoughts, and that was on Wednesday before Troy Athens and play, or before um, West Bloomfield played, and I was saying, you know, it was a log jam at the top. Right. But Oxford beat West Bloomfield last night. Oxford now has at least a share of the OAA red title. And after that, it's the usual dogfight in the OAA Red. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, you say that, and that's this is this would be Oxford. This is Oxford's first OAA Red title, and so they're obviously really proud of that. And Zach Lyons done a nice job of, of really growing that program. Um, but and this is not a slight at Oxford. Don't get me wrong. But if you go back to the preseason prognosticators, right? Did you have anybody? Did any, anyone that predicted Oxford would win the OAA Red, I think more times than not, you'd see them number four, right. number five in that list. So again, it's a tribute to what they're doing up there. But at the same time, we say this all the time here in the OAA Red, 
everyone beats up on everyone. Yep. And that's what you're seeing this year particularly. Yep. And as we always say again, it gets these teams because most of the red division is going to make the playoffs. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And they are steeled against beating up on each other, and they're going to be ready when playoff time comes around. Absolutely. They're preparing themselves week in, week out. Coach Bell talks about it all the time. OAA Red football is some of the best football in the entire state of Michigan. And when you can compete at a high level week in, week out, you're preparing for the ups and downs, the highs and lows in each and every game. And so um, you're going to see all that tonight here at homecoming. Oh, yeah. The stands are filling up already. 20 minutes before kickoff on both sides and they're going to be around the track. So we are going to have a great crowd. We're going to have a great football game. Stay with us. Pre-game was underwritten by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art collision and repair facility. Stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248-393-2222. Orion Neighborhood Television is your community media outlet. Our mission is to empower community members and groups to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. For more than 35 years, ONTV has offered video production classes to residents of all ages and provides them with the equipment and facilities to produce their own programs. Not only are residents encouraged to produce programs, but ONTV staff produces programs that promote local nonprofits and community groups like the Chamber of Commerce, the Orion Township Public Library, the Lake Orion Lions Club, and the Orion Arts Center, to name a few. ON TV has been um, very important for all our events. We have our community Dragon on the Lake and Art and Flower Fair. We also have our holiday market and um, they're always out there promoting us and um, covering our events but also promoting through um, on-site interviews at the studio which are very helpful and to have the footage after for us to be able to use in our marketing materials and to put on our Facebook, it's been really beneficial for us. Yes, ONTV has just been a great partner. Um, we're so thankful for them. And what they do is they really come to all of our events, especially our ribbon cuttings, having their ribbon cuttings documented so that they can archive it, put it in their business history, post it on social media, means so much to our small business owners. They've really never seen anything like that before, and that's what's so unique about the Orion community and ONTV, is that they're always there for us. Last year, they did 18 ribbon cuttings. They stay from the start to the finish. They interview the small business owners, and we all just couldn't be more grateful. That exposure is just critical to us. We have to get the word out there about how people can volunteer more. That That's a a thing that's becoming less and less important to people in this world and the more we can get the word out with your help the better off we all are in the community. The staff ventures out into the community to cover events like parades, festivals, concerts, and high school sports and for more than 30 years ONTV has provided the equipment and staffing needed to televise township and village meetings live to Lake Orion residents. In Michigan it's a unique model and I don't know how it works in other states but in Michigan specifically we don't have to pay to put the equipment in our, our facilities that so we can broadcast these meetings and government transparency it's not just a buzzword it's it's required uh, in today's day and age um, but the fact that our residents aren't paying for that through their property taxes is, is is invaluable in my opinion the fact that it's funded through these franchise fees that the cable companies have paid forever um, a few pennies literally on, on cable bills helps fund uh, this really important, um, you know, government isn't trusted anymore. This is one way um, people trust us because we're closer to them, but everything we do is in the light of day. And it's thanks to this funding that exists, a uh, really unique mechanism that allows us to continue to, to give that to our residents. I think it's mission critical for clarity, honesty, and uh, uh, just getting the message of local government out to its residents. I mean, Social media has become a way to do that, but on TV is on social media. So 
I, I don't think that we can broadcast meetings in any other way or better uh, at a better rate or a better price than what ONTV provides. ONTV also provides the video equipment that Lake Orion High School students use as they prepare for a career in broadcasting. The franchise fees, the PEG fees uh, that fund ONTV and the Cable Commission actually benefit and fund our program as well. Uh, we're able to ask for grants from that organization, from ONTV, from the Cable Commission to help us. Uh, we're very fortunate to have one of the best broadcast programs in the state, if not the country. Um, and they're a huge funding revenue source for us uh, to be able to provide our students past and present with amazing technology that's very comparable to what the, the, the professionals use in the industry. ONTV's podcast studio and training give producers an opportunity to educate and entertain listeners. To sign up for classes or for more information, call 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org. As the Dragons take the field, it is homecoming night. The Clarkston Wolves and the Lake Orion Dragons. Chris, you've got keys to the game for tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I think the first one is, is pretty obvious, but, but I call it the T.R. Hill, do it all, be all. He's got to play well for Lake Orion to come out, out on top. Uh, he leads the team in rushing. Uh, 451 yards rushing, 7.8 yards a carry. Last week versus West Bloomfield, 17 carries, 63 yards, three touchdowns, 12 of 22 in the air, 154 yards a touchdown, throw, a throwing touchdown as well. So he's got to be on all night long to lead this offense, put points on the board, hopefully win football games. And then the flip side of the football, number two, simple tackle, tackle, tackle. We talked to Coach Bell before the, 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 the game uh, on the field and, stu and stuff, and he said, our guys, when we get beat, all right, we're, we're, we're lunging. We're, we can't lunge. We've got to run our feet. We, we don't want to hit to the ball carrier. We want to hit through the ball carrier. So we have to watch that tonight. If, if, if Clarkson's able to get out on the perimeter and make some plays, it's more times than not because we're out of position and we're lunging uh, for, for making tackles. So those two things on both sides of the football, I think, are keys to tonight's game. Clarkson won the toss and elected to receive... Our officiating crew tonight is a longtime OAA crew. The referee is Fred Castleviteris. The head linesman is Dave Thatcher. The line judge is Mike Dunn. Bob Kelly is the umpire tonight. Mick Timko is the back judge. Al Fragnoli is the side judge. And Tom Semkowski is the field judge waiting for Clarkston to make their appearance on the field. They are coached by head coach Justin Pinter. And Chris, we, we talked in pregame of the, the good job he's done with not maybe his most physically imposing team he's ever had, but he's got them playing very solid football. Yeah, no, I, he, he, you're right. I mean, the uh, third year with Clarkston, um, almost 60% winning percentage, so... Uh, they're doing things right up there, and, and uh, as they have for quite a long time. Yeah. And so you're right. He's just finding his way within the OAA Red, and he's been around the program for quite a, quite a while as well. And so uh, when it's all said and done, um, we know what this game's going to be all about. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's not it, – yes, it's, maybe it's a battle of the coaches in terms of how they, they scheme once against one another, but when it's all said and done, it's those players' involvement and what they play and who, who's going to make the biggest play, who's going to have the ball at the end to win it. Yeah. Have seen, uh, it's nice to see the alumni back on homecoming weekend. I saw, saw Steve Sheffield as a linebacker on the 98 regional championship team here with his dad. And his brother, Joe, is supposed to be here, but Joe's usually late for everything, and I see nothing's <laughs> changed in adulthood. <laughs> and Clarkston makes their appearance on the field. Their stands are about two-thirds full, and I'm sure that will fill up more. Not a lot of traffic around the back of the track as yet. And we have everybody here. We have WJR also simulcasting, and you're a proud dad with part of that. 
Absolutely. My daughter, Taryn Fritching, has been doing uh, games for seven weeks with WJR and Sportscaster.com. And so she's been doing some pregame, halftime, postgame stuff. And she's here tonight. And it's kind of special for me as a dad. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. We will pause right now as Director Michael Steele leads the band in our national anthem. First quarter is underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com or order dinner. It's not too late. The first quarter is also underwritten by Orion Oaks Dental, where the number one priority is to deliver quality care to their patients in a comfortable and convenient setting. Located at 400 West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion, visit their website at www.orionoaksdental.com or give them a call at 248-693-4422. And I thought I had another read, but I can't find it, so we won't get it yet. Clarkston will receive Will Hoffman teeing the ball up on the 40. Number looks like 29. Lucas Fitton is back deep along actually, with. Actually, it's Brady Beck, number 22, and 16, Mick Mahaffey. They, they have yellow numbers on white shirts. <laughs> will Hoffman puts it into and out of the end zone. Clarkston will take over first and 10 on the 20. Last season, the Dragons went to Clarkston and thoroughly dominated Clarkston. And I, I'm pretty sure that the results of that game were posted on Clarkston's locker room this year. Well, we were here, uh, my daughter and I were here on Wednesday practice and watched Lake Orion practice, and, and Coach Bell said, because asked, we asked the same thing of him about the, the is it a revenge game because of the playoff loss yeah. to Clarkson last week or last year, and he said no, absolutely it's not. It's all new season. It is. Twins left single wide right, single back in the backfield on first down. Now motion this side, handoff up the middle, Number one, Luke Bowman on the carry, Will Hoffman in on the stop. Not only did Clarkston put yellow numbers on white shirts, but they gave us a roster that is in like .2 font. <laughs> or our eyes are getting worse and worse as time goes on. Combination of all of the above. <laughs> Second down and one. They go trips left, single wide right. Tripped up in the backfield. What a play by Ryan Rochelot. He shot through. 
Was that 88? Yes, or it was. It was yeah. yeah, Rochelo, and he came in and, and it disrupted the the, the, the counter action that was coming to the near side of the field. It went back that way and blew up the blocker. And uh, I don't know if he actually made the tackle, but it tripped him up enough to, to get the stop and a loss of four on the play. Well, and or he had the back ran into the other running right. back. Coming out, hurry up on third down. Trips right, single wide left, handoff. Off the right side, he's not gonna get there. Good defensive play by the Dragons. Lane Garris in there and Brandon others. Nepchuk, yeah, Brandon Nepchuk was in there as well. On the stop, a gain of two. So it's fourth down and two from the 28. And Clarkson's gonna go for it. Is this a situation you tr try to draw him off sides, get him to jump? Handoff up the middle and he's stoned. Dragons are gonna take over on downs. Trey Pakmara came in. Rochelo was there. What a defensive stand by the Dragons on the first drive of the game. Look at the penetration. Boom, boom, boom. There's not a white jersey on this side of the 30-yard line. They're not getting any movement up front. We talked earlier yeah. in pregame about they're not as big up front as they've traditionally been. Lake Orion, great penetration. Stopped him short, one yard short. Turnover on downs. Dragons take over. They split England, Vasquez, right. Jamari Cooper in motion. T.R. Hill on the carry, gets a couple. Tell you what, Griffin Bowman came off the edge and kind of blew up that mesh between the quarterback, or Hill, and the, the, the jet motion back. Um, again, there's a Griffin Bowman and there's a Luke, Lucas yeah. Bowman. They're both good on both sides of the football. Zero and one. So they're giving him no gain. It'll be second and 10. Braden Blackstock over the ball at center. Single back alongside TR. He takes it up the middle. He's in the open field. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons, T.R. Hill. It was like the parting of the seas at the line. White shirts went left and white shirts went right and there was nothing left. And number six went right at the middle for yep. six. Will Hoffman coming out for the extra point. Jackie Vasquez will hold. Well, kick is up and the kick is no good. So 901 left here in the first. It's six to nothing, Lake Orion. I didn't see was the point just not. Here's a touchdown, nice pull, nice kick yeah. out. Yeah, you're right, TR found the gap right up the middle. And I don't even know if he was touched going into the end zone. He was just touched as he went through the line. In games like this, between these two rivals, teams that don't uh, care for one another, uh, those single points that are missed can be crucial. Yes, they can. And the Dragons capitalize on the turnover and take the early lead. At least that's the rumor that, the, that these two schools don't like each other. I, I don't know if it's true or not. It's been going on for years. <laughs> So Will Hoffman has it teed up. Referee Fred Castlevateri blows the whistle. High end over end kick into the end zone. It'll come out to the 21st and 10.
Hey, make sure you can go mobile with ONTV anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or X, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with ONTV to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. ONTV working to bring Lake Orion to the world. We have a beautiful night here in Lake Orion tonight. As last night in the Powder Puff game, we were bundled up wearing shirt sleeves yeah, tonight. Yeah, I know it's you're beautiful. You're right. Trips left, single back in the backfield on first down. Rolling, looks, hit as he throws. Incomplete. Good pressure by Brendan Upchuck. That's, that's, you're right, and that, that's what they're gonna have to continue to do. Um, that pass was intended for T.J. Schaefer, Schaefer, number 81. Great coverage downfield by Trey Pacmara. But, but you're right, the pressure, I think, forced the errant throw. And, and that's something that Lake Orion hasn't really done a good enough job of this year is provide quarterback sacks. But that pressure um, makes that young sophomore quarterback have to think a little bit now. Yeah. Twins right, single wide left on second down. A motion this side. Quarterback keeper around the right side. He's got some running room. Being chased down by Brendan Nep Nepchuk. Came all the way from the 20 in his defensive line position and chased him down at the Lake Orion 40. Yeah, great play action fake, and he kept the ball. got to the edge, and there was nobody what in that flat area there. Yeah, that's great hustle. That's, yeah, that's is. flat out effort. First and 10 from the Lake Orion 39. A 40 yard, 41 yard run by a defensive lineman. The problem is he was chasing the opponent with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> same play, same direction. First down, down to the 20. Washeko has found the weak side in that Dragon defense around the left and side. Here the Bowman brothers come and block number zero, number one, bam, there's the kick out. Yeah. Zero leads up and through, and boom, there's a nice hole for Washeko to make the play downfield inside the 20, or at the 20 yard, excuse me. So first and 10. Two carries, 60 yards. Yeah. Twins right, single wide left. From the gun. Handoff around the right side, taken down. That was... Grady Harbin with the play. Yeah. Nice job from his defensive back position. Coming up, making the play again. We talked earlier at pregame. Tackle, tackle, tackle. That's what they're going to have to do. That's a nice... Loss of two on the play. And it just got strung out enough that Bowman could not cut it upfield. So that makes it second down and 12 with the ball spotted on the 22. Trips left, single wide right. Back, looking, good pocket. Throws to the end zone, overthrown. It'll be third down. That's uh, he, he threw that in double coverage. Yeah, and I, threw, and I know he threw it out of the back of the end zone, but that is a what they call a coverage sack. Yeah. All right. Pressure was getting there late, late but he did have time. And when it's all said and done, Mazenko couldn't find anybody downfield. And uh, great job in that defensive secondary. Third and 12. Pacheco from the gun again. Trips left, single wide right on third down. Drops, looks, throws. Got a receiver, caught in. Nope, they're gonna mark him down on the one. 
Both the head linesman and the line judge came in at the same spot. It's going to be marked on about the three-inch line. This wide receiver, X receiver up top, boom. Nice job on a simple post, simple slant. Did a nice job finding the seam, finding the hole. Nice pitch and catch, down to the one. Handoff, up the middle. And he's in for the touchdown. Griffin Bowman from one yard out. 80 yards in six plays. And Clarkston's tied it up, looking to take the lead on the extra point. Done mostly on the ground. Aiden O'Neill is the kicker. Ball is down, kick is up. And the kick is good. 641 to go in the first. Clarkston goes out to a 7-6 lead. Well, <laughs> we're not yeah. even halfway into this first quarter. <laughs> yeah, and this is has all the makings of being a barn burner tonight. And you know what? With Clarkston Lake Orion, you would expect nothing less. Our crew tonight, uh, of course, Joey Tysick back down in the van, pushing all the buttons and making everything look good. Joe Johnson doing his usual great job on the sideline as he turns around and points the camera up at us. You don't want us on camera, nah. I'll tell you that. We did enough in pregame. <laughs> so Jamari Cooper and Jackie Vasquez drop beat deep for the Dragons. O'Neill will kick off. Approaches. High end over end kick into the end zone. Lake Orion will take over first and 10 at the 20. Here we go. We will let you know that Orion Neighborhood Television will be celebrating Community Media Day on October 21st. Community Media Day is an annual celebration of voices that bring awareness to the importance of free speech and accessible media for all individuals to have their voices heard. ONTV is inviting anyone to our open house from 5 to 8 p.m. with snacks and refreshments to see what we have to offer the community. And I'll finish the read after this play. Jaden Barrero at the running back position. He gets the handoff, cuts it upfield, breaks a tackle, spins forward, for a gain of four, it'll be second down. We are also inviting nonprofit organizations to rec record a quick PSA if they would like throughout the day. And that's October 21st from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> second and five, they're calling it. Barrero again weaving his way up close to the first down and according to the head of the line judge, he got it. Yep, they're moving the chains. First and 10 Dragons. Senior captain Drew Ball, number 54 for the Wolves on that tackle. Good player, we'll talk, call his name quite a bit tonight as well. On first and 10, double wide, double slot. TR back to throw, got pressure, gets out of it. Heads up field and tripped up near the 35. They're gonna mark him down at 
the 34. The awareness to turn his shoulder and dip it and find a way to get upfield yeah. and even get anything out of that is amazing. And he had pressure coming on and did a really nice spin move to get out of it. That's just it. When you, the pressure is there, you turn your shoulder, you, you, you turn up field, and boom, they're there. And how he avoided that um, is beyond me. Flat out athlete. I've seen it all year. Motion this side. TR on the keeper. Cuts it upfield. Got a first down and more over the 40 to the 43. So another first down on the ground. I don't think we're going to see a lot of passing first downs tonight. But both office offenses are arranged. They'll run it, run it, run it, and then bang, they'll, they'll pop one out. He threw 22 times in that shootout game last week. Vasquez trying to spin away from trouble. He gets dropped for no gain. And Clarkson's defense was in there before that play really got developed. Yeah, no, and that, that's what that, they almost got there on the mesh, the, court, the, 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 uh, the handoff between Hill and Vasquez, and, and uh, that kind of threw off the timing of everything and uh, loss of one on the play. Peyton McIntyre checks in for Jaden Barrero. On second and 11, Guerrero alongside Hill from the gun. TR rolling right, looks, throws, caught. Jamari Cooper at the sticks. And they're gonna call a first down. Jamari knew where he had to go and ran straight for the stick. Good protection, nice ball, place where nobody can catch it. You're right, Doug. Knew where to go to. And a little sidearm fling from TR there. Little gunslinger action, you say? Doing his best Patrick Mahomes imitation. <laughs> so first and 10 again for the Dragon. He's a pretty good one to imitate if you want to imitate yeah, anybody. that's for sure. Cooper in motion. Yeah. Vasquez on the carry. Did he get there? No, he's down at the one. And TR got leveled. That's what I was, I was watching TR on the ground to see if we were gonna draw a flag. In the meantime, Vasquez is running through the population and almost scored. Yeah, right, right there, wham! There. And it's, it's... Look at the cutback, right there. And if you're sitting here in the stands, the, the gasping of the fans, yeah. woo! And I think they all saw the same thing, but then Vasquez kept going, kept going, and nice pursuit, great effort by number 22 for Clarkston, Brady and Beck. Kyle England did a smart thing. He was in pursuit as we go in for the touchdown. Jaden Barrero for the touchdown, but on that Vasquez run, Kyle England was bringing up rear pursuit and was had a chance. He had his arms ready to block and saw the nameplate and the back number and just pulled his arms in. What a heads up play. Not to draw the penalty. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Ball is down, kick is up. This one's good. Three minutes to go in the first. It's now 13 to seven, Lake Orion. The scoreboard for this half is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. Michigan United Credit Union is a full service financial institution that serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. 
give them a call at 248-814-4000 or visit their website at michiganunitedcu.org for more information. And once again, replays for this game are sponsored by Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Crown supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. Will Hoffman has it teed up. High short kick taken on the five, up over the 20 and down right there. What a play, Donovan Finley. Donovan Finley. Oh, oh my. Just stoned him. I mean, Coach Bell talk again, we said it in the pregame, talk about tackle, tackle, tackle. tackle. It doesn't yeah. matter where you're tackling. You got to defensively, special teams wise, that was a tackle. That's a that's one of those ones that you put up on the on the film tomorrow morning and show that as a textbook play. Watch gotcha. it right here. Finley gotcha. coming from right here. Wham! That's keeping your feet moving yes, on contact, sir. using the shoulder pad, the front part of the shoulder pad to the best part of your advantage. Well done. First and 10 from the 21. Trips to the left. Single wide right. South track throws. Incomplete. Covered by Austin Kahn who did a great job of staying in pursuit and did not make a move for the ball carrier till the ball was over his head. No, you're right. I mean, that, that would have been a very, very tough catch. Great position defensively in the in, on the inside hip of the wide receiver. And, uh, but what they're, what's Clarkson trying to do? They're trying to open up, open it up and make, make everybody know that they can go deep. They've thrown a couple deep balls. They have, they've been incomplete, but nonetheless, it makes you think defensively now. From a pistol formation. Rolling got setting up a screen, sniffed out and dropped. Late flag came in. Alex Hensley on the stop. First flag of the night. Holding Clarkston. This one's coming back. Max Nearing checks in for Ryan Rochelo. And be 10 yards in the previous spot. It'll be second down and 20 from the 11. Clarkson's got twins right, two backs in the backfield. Page back, looks, throws, got a receiver out there, dropped. Austin, or Will Hoffman. And yeah, Austin Kahn was there as well. Yeah, and Austin Kahn. Got some of the penalty yardage back. It'll be third and 12 as we close in on the two minute mark of the first quarter. Dragons up 13 to seven. So on third down, Clarkston comes out, trips left, single wide right from the gun. Back looking, got pressured. Little toss pass and down he goes. Tossed it to Jake Bowman. Lucas. Yep. Lucas. Yep. Luke Bowman, and he got dropped. It'll be fourth and 11. Again, but it's all set up by the pressure. Look, one, two, three. And he almost did a nice job being aware of just flipping it up to Bowman, what Shenko did. But when it's all said and done, it was the pressure that Lake Orange put on him and forced him up in the pocket. 
Well done, Lake Orion. And Peyton McIntyre did a great job of playing off his block to bring him down. So Vasquez back to receive the punt. And we have a stoppage in play. Delay a game, that'll back them up five more. And on a fourth down, that's inexcusable. You've made up your mind you're going to punt. You get your punt team in, you snap the ball, and you kick it. Field position. Field position game. Great. Should, should be great for the Lake Orion. Small, bad punt off the side of his foot. Went out of bounds close to the 30-yard line, and that's where we're going to mark it out. Lake Orion is going to get tremendous field position after a 15-yard punt. And these are the things that can tip a game. We talked about the, the missed extra point, a shanked punt. You can't give a team. No. You, you can. So think about this. I mean, Turnover on downs, the first series. Lake Orion got the ball starting at the 29-yard line, scored. They scored the second drive, 80 yards. And then now they've got their third drive. They're starting at the plus 30 of Clarkston. So um, see if Lake Orion can convert here. Great field position. Handoff up the middle is Dom Diego Hawkins. He gets a couple. It'll be second and eight. Coach Bell sending the play in. Oh, they're going to let the quarter lapse. We played one, a very exciting first quarter. The Lake Orion Dragons lead the Clarkston Wolves 13 to 7. At halftime today, we will have the annual homecoming festivities where they will crown the homecoming court. But now, for nearly 50, 75 years, the Orion Chamber of Commerce has been dedicated to creating a healthy local economy and building a strong environment for economic growth and stability. They represent business to the government, coordinate educational forums, host networking events, advocate for business-friendly legislation, and promote community. The Chamber is a 501c6 nonprofit organization funded through Chamber membership investments, sponsors, and fundraisers. Follow them on Facebook or visit their website, orionareachamber.com. So the Dragons will have the ball on the 28-yard line. Lake Orion, two of two in the first quarter on their first two drive, putting points on the board. Yeah. Clarkston, three three drives, one score. That's the difference in the ball game so far. They've got a they they've got the ball marked past the down marker. So they got to remark the ball. They got to flip the chains. Is what they got to do. The chains are. No, the chains. Well, the, it's the, second and eight. They've got it marked about ten yards too far. Yeah, the off chains. The, field. the chains have got no. It's on the twenty-eight. We started the ball at the thirty-yard, yeah. the plus thirty-yard line. The chains have got to move, not the yeah. down marker. The chains have got to move. Which way are they going? No, no. There, there we go. There, now they're, they're moving. Them. There we go. Mike Dunn, the head linesman, uh, has a <laughs> thankless job over there. So there we go. Now we're set. Second down and eight. Hey, the chain crew's all volunteers, too. <laughs> all right. So are we. Yes, yeah, so are we. 
Twins right on second down. TR rolling right, looks, throws. Intended for Jamari Cooper and broken up. Brody Rotter. By the, Brody Rotter. Yep. A little comeback route and TR tries to put it on the outside and Rotter's, that's a heck of a play. Heck of a play by Rotter. So that'll bring up third. Now we have an, a penalty being walked off against Lake Orion. Which Lake Orion's done a good job. There's only 19 penalties as a whole coming into the game through six games. So just a little over three per game. Not bad at all. Ineligible receiver downfield on the Dragons. So that'll back them up and make it second down and 13 from the 33. TR rolling, looking, keeping it. He gets a couple. He had good pursuit. He, he was being chased pretty good. And again, that was a coverage pressure. Third down and 12. Ball's marked on the 32. Like to take advantage of this short field. They've lost two on this whole series from where they've started. England splits wide right, Vasquez in the slot. TR gets out of trouble and just taken down by a shoelace by number 78, Kylan Lays. Is that who you had? Griffin Bowman, I got huh? tripped up. Okay. Yep. I saw 78 yep. get up. So. so fourth and 13, Will Hoffman is coming out to try a 50 yard field goal. Ball's marked pretty much in the center of the field. Ball's down, kick is up. Is it long enough? No. So the Dragons miss from 50. 10.55 to go in the half. They still hold on to a 13 to seven lead. Clarkston will take over at the 20. But this has been a very entertaining game so far. Did you expect otherwise? I never do. I mean, every time we come here, every time we talk about this game, and again, I know this is my first game back uh, all year, but uh, what, a, what a great game to come back to. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for having me back. <laughs> hey, great job by Kevin McCormick while he was in, but it's good to have you back, partner. Fun to be back. I just again, we talk about it all the time when when I'm up here. I know, but the, just the atmosphere, the, yep. the, the 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 beautiful night as you talked about, the, the the crowd everywhere, the the fact that these two teams are playing it makes it really special. We have a stoppage in play. Clarkson's going to take a timeout. And look, you know, I understand perfectly. A family always comes first. You got to take that time with your family when you can because it passes all too quickly. Don't remind me, please. Thank you. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> well, thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, plus much more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $12 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. And I'll finish after this play. So first and 10 for Clarkston. They have twins left, single wide right, backs in an offset eye. Now motion this side. Keeper by the quarterback. 
going around the right side this time. And he's got a first down near the 35 yard line. They're gonna call him down at the 36. And again, he gets that wall of blockers out there. I'm telling you, this is the second week I've seen him in a row, and he's only a sophomore, Alex Wyshenko, but I've been impressed. Yeah. I've been impressed. His composure, his poise, uh, uh, he does a nice job, runs this show pretty well. Twins left, single wide right, toss. Trying to find a hole, nothing there. Three green shirts brought him down. Luke Bowman on the carry. Will Hoffman in there on the stop. And it'll be no gain, it'll be second and 10. Up, oh, gave him a yard. That Lake Orion defensive front is so active. Led by Brandon Nepchuk and Ryan Rochelot, they are all over the field. Trips left. Handoff. Up the middle, not quite to the first down. They're gonna mark him two yards short. It'll be third and two. Rochelot and who else? Nepchuk in on the stop. along with Lane Garris. Third and two. They come out trips right, single wide left, now motion far side. Handoff, reverse. Coming around this side, flag down. He's still on his feet, another flag down. And another flag down. And another one in the middle, near little, the middle of the field. A couple extracurriculars going on, and the officiating crew is gonna cut that off right now. Officials pointing to the sideline. Yeah. And then Nepchuk lost his helmet on the tackle. I don't know if they, they thought he was standing up and over the, the ball carrier I and didn't. talking stuff. I, I don't know. We'll find out, right? Yeah. There are three, four pieces of laundry on the field. Yeah, I mean, I, I think early on, and that double reverse there, there seemed to be the hold on the edge here. That's what the first one was. And then the extracurriculars, I think, near the sideline, but then very yeah. late near the, 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 the right side yeah. of the O on the field, that one came. So I don't know what that was from. Trey Pacmar was in the general vicinity of that one. There's, there might be more than there, two penalties on this be. one. There's probably some, an, an offsetting penalty in there somewhere, I'm guessing. Let's see if we can see what happens here. He takes the there's play. a hold there's right a there. Hold there's on, the hold. hold there's a the first Rochelle. play. Boom, there's a missed tackle. Finish, finish, finish. Stays on his feet, nice job. There's a tackle. There's Nepchuk loses his helmet. Right yeah. there, I think he's kind of standing up and over. Brady back, the ball carrier. Can't help the fact that his helmet came off, but so again, there, I'm only speculating from up here, but shouldn't do that, I know, but. They're talking to Coach Bell. I hope they're not saying that Brandon Nepchuk took his helmet off, because we didn't see that. No. Helmet came off. It's part he of the is, tackle. He is kind of standing up. Standing up and over him. This guy already threw his official, or his flag right there. The, the, where's the other 
Will Hoffman oh, right got there. Blind, there it was. blindsided. Yep. Will Hoffman, and uh, couldn't tell who that was, in on that extracurricular so there. See. The Clarkston defender, or I'm sorry, Clark Clarkston offensive player, flew back and fell on the ground. important that they obviously they want to get it right absolutely absolutely and believe me they do not want to eject the player unless it's really obvious and I don't think anything was really obvious on that and then it's matching up the, the different yeah. penalty flags that were thrown too I mean We, we saw, we, we, th well, we think we saw the hold on the edge. Yes, we saw that. Okay. Now he's got to go over and report it to, to Clarkston and what they decided upon. This is a difficult job. And you know, it's part of my, my day job. One of the things that, that um, we talk a lot about is, is you know, there's four roles in every game. If you're a player, you play in the game. If you coach, you coach the game. If you're an official, you officiate the game. And and if you are a spectator, guess what? You watch the game. You watch the and, game. And, and and those four roles are so critical to the success of any any sporting event, whether it's youth, you know, middle school, high school, doesn't matter. And and my point in bringing this up is there are three teams on that football field tonight, and oftentimes the ones in the black and white get the ridicule, whatever you want to call it, the wrong way. And, and they're in a critical part of youth sports, high school sports, and we can't forget the time and the effort that they put into making sports what it is. Yep. Yeah, are there going to be uh, mistakes that are made? Absolutely, but guess what? We all make mistakes, and, and we're going to okay. try to clear this up right now. But I, my point in saying that is they're doing a great job of trying to make sure that this is done right, like yes. you said earlier. We've always said there's only five guys, now seven guys on this field that don't care who, who wins. And those are the guys in the striped shirts. But they, they take pride in getting it right. Absolutely. And we need to have more and more oh young officials coming into sports so our kids can play all these games that they want to play. Okay. And that's all they called was a hold on Clarkston. Oh. All right. So a hold on Clarkston and an unsportsmanlike or a personal foul on Lake Orion. Nobody's ejected. Move the chains. Let's play football. Now, did something go on down there that we maybe didn't see? Probably. So first and 10 for Clarkston. They've got four wide to the right. Now motion that side. Sniffed out and dropped by A.J. Leitz. He saw that coming. Saw that coming, did a nice job. Here's the play. The swing, little swing pass. Nobody picked him up. Bam! Stand your feet, stand your feet. Luckily, he was able to trip him up and for a loss of two on the play. Heads up play by AJ. So that makes it second and 12. Twins left, single wide right. Handoff coming around the left side. Chase him out of bounds at the Lake Orion 45. It'll be third down and five. As we close in at the halfway mark here in the second quarter. A 
couple times now. They've gotten that edge there. They off right off tackle there. Trey Pachmar did a nice job coming over his cornerback position to make that open field tackle, get him out of bounds. Twins right, single wide left on third down. Dragons looking for a defensive stand. Pressure, down he goes. Lane Garrison there. And he came in and held on and would not let go. So fourth down, and Clarkson's going to have to punt. It's only the fourth Lake Orion sack of the year. Yeah, that's, that's the pressure they need. Yeah. And you've seen it quite a bit tonight. First credited sack of the night. Jackie Vasquez back on the 15. That's returnable. Yep, he made oh, a fair but, catch. Okay, I didn't see Took that. Look at the 23. <laughs> You know, we've been doing these for a long time, and one thing I've never ex asked the ex-quarterback, do you prefer running to the sideline to get the play or having the play signaled in? So I'm, 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 I'm dating myself because that makes me really old, sure. but I was playing back in the day when our wide receivers were in three-point stances. But that's another <laughs> story, whole other story. Um, we had running backs back in my day run the plays in Shoulder and out of the play. Yep. yep. So that we had our we had backs that were really good, really complimented one another and so we did it that way. There was we did not signal anything in back then, but again, yeah. that that shows how old I am and how long ago I played. <laughs> so, first and 10 for Lake Orion. Jamari Cooper around the left side, he's dropped for about a 4-yard loss. Good pursuit by that Clarkston defensive front. Now with the advent of you know the 40-second clock in the end zones, they can tell when they got to speed that play up. Absolutely. And not every school has it, but but at the same time, it's uh, and you always walk it, watching the back judge if you're the yes. quarterback and and so forth. And um, was that a game last night where there was no 40-second play clock, but and and. and uh, the quarterback was deliberately watching the back judge yep. to make sure to run some clock and call it with under five seconds to go. TR gets met in the backfield and he's going to be dropped. There were six wolves yes. in that backfield. No one fell for the, the, the jet motion coming back this way and boom. And they just teed off on that Lake Orion offensive line. So third down and 15. I think the defenses have kind of settled after the the first two yeah. drives from each of the teams, right? It's been a defensive struggle. AJ Catnachi checks in at a wide receiver position. On third and 15, double wide, double slot for the Dragons. TR back. And we have a stoppage in play. I think it's going to be a procedure call against the Dragons. So that'll back them up more. It'll be third down and 20. Not the way you want to be going. No. Again, double wide, double slot look. Single back. TR. Back to th escaping. Got it complete to Vasquez at the 18-yard line. It'll be fourth down and 15. He got the... Penalty yardage back. <laughs> Having a discussion with a Clarkston punt returner and a back judge about making a visible fair catch signal. Wobbly kick. 
going marked out of bounds at the Lake Orion 45. So 347 to go here in the second quarter and it's still 13 to seven. During this sports season, ONTV will be covering a large variety of games. Our sports coverage will include varsity football, JV football, volleyball, boys soccer, and more. Select games will be streamed live on dragonbroadcasting.org and will be replayed on our channel, Comcast 10 and AT&T 99. Visit ONTV.org for our program schedule. First and 10. Four wide receivers right on first down. Yeah, the inside receiver. Hand off up the middle and just caught by a shoelace by Peyton McIntyre. Which Bowman was that? Is that Lucas? Lucas. Number one. And McIntyre just caught him by a shoe and hung on. Four wides again. Quarterback keeper slips a couple tackles. Taken down inside the 30. Ryan Rochelow brought him down. Nepchuk had him at yeah. about the 42 yard line, spun away. And Washeko was a little slow getting up and he doesn't look too healthy out there. His teammates hauled him to his feet. Two elusive quarterbacks in this game, fun Absolutely. to watch. Clarkston stays with a four wide receiver look split right. We approach 2.30 before halftime. Handoff. Bowman inside the 10 to the nine. He's close to and will have the first down. It'll be first and goal for Clarkston. Clarkston took the opening kickoff so the Dragons will receive to start the third. Yeah, but they took it and didn't go anywhere. That's true. <laughs> Which resulted in Lake Orion's touchdown run yes. from T.R. Hill. In this formation, that inside third receiver is not eligible. He's both, those two middle yes. receivers are on the line. Got to keep that in mind. Bowman up the middle, stacked up, and finally unceremoniously, one of the offensive linemen was unceremoniously dumped. It'll be second down from the four. Gain of four on first down. Going back to what you talked about is getting plays in the quarterbacks going to the sideline. Yeah. You're, getting, you're getting a lot of your steps in that way. Absolutely. <laughs> Five seconds left on the play clock. And there's going to be a motion penalty here. About three of the four receivers that were split right took off, took off early. So that is a huge penalty as it backs them up to the nine. They repeat second down. From the four wide set again. Step check up the middle. Got maybe to the six. It's going to be third down under a minute to go. They have to get one more playoff. And they're not showing a whole lot of sense of urgency not, to I get up that, there. I think Wojenko is 
limping a little bit. Like you said earlier, looks like they're gonna run the clock down, call timeout. They've got two left. Think about it a little bit. They may try a field goal in this situation too. I think they'd want it. Well, they got one timeout left. Yeah. I mean, you can run anything here. You can run, you can run, run the ball. You can throw the ball. I mean, bottom line, I would think you'd want to try to get into the end zone. 22 seconds left. You can get two plays off. Absolutely, you can. You got again. You got the one timeout. Lake Oregon's got three. So I think they were trying to run the clock down a little bit to see if Lake Orion was going to use their timeout. All right, so they could play that. That, yeah. In case they did score, it wouldn't get, give Lake Orion the, the the ball back with, or at least with as much time as they would have liked if they got the ball back off and went on offense. So Clarkson just ran some clock a little bit to get them in a position to. It is a never-ending chess game. That's what makes this game so great. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's not only watching personnel. It's not only the one-on-one -on -one matchups up the middle. Um, it's it's not only the the schemes, the X's and O's versus the X and O's. It's the coordinators. It's the offensive coordinator versus the defensive coordinator. It's the, the community versus the community. It's it's all those things combined that make football so great. Jacob Escobedo checked in along the defensive line. He's a big one. So on third down. Trying to get up the middle, he's not gonna make it. Travis, Travis Acker. We said that at the same yeah. time. How about that? We both found our schedule. Our what roster. a play. What yeah. a play. You're gonna hold him to a field goal attempt. Yep. Clarkson is going to 1.7 seconds left. It will be about a 25 yard attempt. 1.7 seconds left. We will have an extended halftime tonight because it is homecoming. You know, looking over on the other side of the field, the Clarkston stands are full. The fence along the, from the stands over to the track is full. And the lines at the concession stands are almost to the fence. We have a crowd here tonight. So they were selling standing room only tickets tonight, huh? Uh, as far as I know, <laughs> we we have the best seat in the house here. We do, we do. So 1.7 seconds left and O'Neill will come out for a 24 yard attempt from the center of the field. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good as time expires. It's halftime. The Lake Orion Dragons lead the Clarkston Wolves 13 to 10. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television and on the NFHS streaming service. We are the MHSAA, a collection of 750 high schools and 750 middle schools. From Temperance to Copper Harbor, from New Buffalo to Alpena, each year, more than a quarter of a million students play one of our 28 sports. More than one and a half million fans attend our postseason games. There are 30,000 coaches and 8,000 officials, not to mention all of the volunteers. The MHSAA believes in the four S's. School sports should be safe and kept in the appropriate scope. We believe nothing beats great sportsmanship and that scholarship in the classroom is more important than excellence on the field or court. Most of all, we believe school sports should be fun. So come out and join us at a game. Support your school, support your community, and come see what the excitement is all about.
the 2024 Royal Dragon Court members elected by the senior class and will be crowning this year's homecoming king and queen. Our first court member is Evie Taylor. Evie is the daughter of Scott and Jen Taylor. She plays on the varsity soccer team and is the vice president of leadership. Also, she's a member of DECA and NHS. She hopes to go into business or nursing and currently is undecided where she will study but hopes to play soccer wherever she lands. Her favorite part about being a dragon is getting involved and being a part of our united community. Up next is Gabriel Scott. Gabe is the son of John McDaniel and is escorted by his mom, Nina McDaniel, and his sister, Lexi. Gabe is a varsity basketball player and plans to one day practice in the chiropractic field. He's proud to be a dragon and part of a strong community that is very passionate about being together. Our third senior is Allison O'Rourke. 
Allison is the daughter of Sean and Joanne O'Rourke and sister to Caitlin O'Rourke. She is involved in leadership, HOSA, and plays on the varsity volleyball team. She hopes to attend Michigan State and wants to major in nursing. Allison is proud to be a dragon because of our positive school culture and the sense of community that we share here. Next is Anderson Wade. Anderson is the son of Bob and Nancy Wade. He's part of the Math Honor Society, the varsity hockey team, and he's a student teacher at Stadium Drive Elementary. Anderson hopes to attend the University of Michigan with a major in education and minor in mathematics. He says he's proud to be a dragon because we are a tight-knit community that allows opportunities to excel as a student and person. Our next senior is Anna Alexo. Anna is the daughter of Mika and Joyce Alexo, Mike and Joyce Alexo. Anna is a member of the Lake Orion Marching Band as a percussionist and a member of the school wind ensemble. She hopes to attend Michigan State and major in education. She says she's proud to be a dragon because she is surrounded by people who support and take care of each other. Up next is Siddharth Mumaneni. Siddharth is the son of Yeshara and Sri Mumaneni and the brother of Samuya. Siddharth is a treasurer of leadership, president and co-founder of HOSA, administrator and coordinator of cultural outreach, a board member of SOS, the vice president of NHS, and also a part of the varsity water polo team. He hopes to play water polo in college and pursue a career in neurosurgery. He's proud to be a dragon because of the supporting and amazing culture we have in this community. Our next senior is Maggie Bailey. Maggie is the daughter of Andrew and Rebecca Bailey and sister of Jack. Maggie is a theater president, a Lake Orion feature twirler, and a member of the television broadcasting workshop. She hopes to study performing arts in film and stage theater. She's also passionate about environmental science and is undecided on what school she wants to attend after graduation. She's proud to be a dragon because of the variety of quality opportunities that are offered to all students and school spirit that abounds here. Next, we have Jack Verlinden. Jack is the son of Sean and Jennifer Verlinden. He's on the varsity soccer team, varsity golf team, a member of the leadership class, National Honor Society, and also the DECA president. He hopes to attend the University of Michigan and study engineering. He's proud to be a dragon because of all the great relationships he has made and people he has met. Next, we have Mia, Mia Linebach. Mia is the daughter of James and Camille Linebach. She's in the choir as well as theater. Mia plans to attend Michigan State University, majoring in chemical engineering. Mia writes that she is proud to be a dragon because of the community, is very supporting and uplifting, pushing her to try her best. And our last senior to introduce is Parker Gannon. Parker is the son of Brian and Darlene Gannon. He is involved in Key Club, Elite Finance Club, Television Production Workshop, and also plays on the varsity lacrosse team. Parker plans to play lacrosse, but is undecided on where he will attend. Parker says he is proud to be a dragon because of the friendships he has made throughout his time at LOHS. Let's go, Parker! Yeah. Congratulations to all of this year's court members.
But more a week from this year's king and queen, let's give a warm homecoming welcome back to last year's queen, Dory Suhai and King Mario Barishai. Dory attends Michigan State University and is majoring in criminal justice, while Mario attends Wayne State University and is majoring in law and criminal justice. All right, Dory and Mario, are you ready to crown this year's queen and king? Dory, will you please crown this year's homecoming queen, Allison O'Rourke. <laughs> Mario, will you please crown this year's homecoming king, Parker Gannon. Thank you all for attending the 2024 Lake Orion Homecoming Game and Halftime Show. And congratulations to all of our senior Dragon Royal Court members. Go Dragons! On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> Finishing up halftime, the Lake Orion Dragons lead the Clarkston Wolves 13 to 10. Halftime was sponsored by Sarah Autom Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art collision and repair facility. Stop by their location at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248 393-2222. And Orion Oaks Dental, where the number one priority is to deliver quality care to their patients in a comfortable and convenient setting. Located at 400 West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion, visit their website at www.orionoaksdental.com or give them a call at 248-693-4422. Chris, just about what we expected. A good half of football. Good half of football. Fairly clean. A couple penalties there in, in amongst us, some scrums and unsportsmanlike, whatever. But it wasn't. It didn't affect the game. But it 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 ratcheted up. If if you needed to, it ratcheted up the intensity that much more. So as tight as it is, as fairly clean as this game's been, um, like you said, that's what we expect in the Lake and Clarkston rivalry. All right, for the second half, I think the I think the Dragons have got to tighten up that quarterback draw. He's pretty much run it well. Yeah, you know you're right. Seven carries, 82 yards for the quarterback Alex Wazenko. Uh Does a nice job getting that open field and so forth. So you've got to make sure you, you keep that. They've they've kept the Bowmans pretty contained. Yeah. You know. Um, Bowman scored the one touchdown. Lucas Bowman scored the one touchdown. I'm sorry, Griffin Bowman scored the one touchdown, the only touchdown for Clarkston. But you're right. Wojenko has done a nice job carrying the ball for them. Um, Lake Orion total offense, 119 yards. T.R. Hill, eight, of eight 
carries, 37 yards and the 29 yard touchdown. They've contained him for the most part yeah. with the exception of that second play of the game for 29 yards. Um, Jackson Vasquez, two carries, 45 yards, a big run down, 46 yep. yard run down to the one yard line. Um, and so um, Jaden Barrero with the touchdown run from one yard out to make it 13 points for Lake Orion. Uh, again, I keep going back to, I know we're at we're three point differential now that 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 extra point yes. that was missed early on you, you kind of look at those things and that you know that can always be a key in a close game close rivalry like this so we got to watch out for that in the second half dragons will receive as jackie vasquez and jamari cooper drop back Again, like I said earlier in the first half, I mean, those first two drives for each team, Clarkson was three and out, and they, they had to, or I'm sorry, four and out, they had to turn over on downs. But but first two drives, Lake Oring had the ball, they scored. Clarkson got the ball, their second drive, they scored. After that, nothing, nothing. Yeah, so it's been a defensive struggle since then. I guess the field goal at the end of the half yeah. to, to, to make it 13-10, but nonetheless, yeah. The defenses have tightened down, played well. Usually you see it the other way around. The yeah. offenses don't get going early on. There's a little feeling out period, but th th in this case, it's just the opposite. The Dragons will, they made the teams change. The Dragons will be going south to north, which means they will be playing into the wind, which isn't, there isn't a lot of, but they'll be playing into the wind in the fourth quarter. O'Neill has it teed up. Approaches, high end over end kick into and out of the end zone. Dragons will take over first and 10 at the 20. And this is where they, got, they have to come out, establish moving the ball on their first drive. It'd be great to come along and get, in, get points and make it a two score game. Absolutely. That, that's the objective, though, every time you've got the ball, is it not? You hope so. <laughs> Usually doesn't work out that way. We were talking about officials. We've heard a lot of coaches tell you, you don't call a perfect game. Well, a coach never calls a perfect game either. No, you're right. On first down, Vasquez in motion. TR on the handoff, up the middle. I think that was Barrero. Yep, Jaden Barrero on the carry, got a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Now Clarkston gets their defensive signals, their call signaled in. Dragons come out, trips, right, tight end lined up on the left. Quick screen out to England. He got three. It'll be third down and five. Smart Cooper did a nice job stock blocking there, making sure his guy didn't make the play, yeah. but Inside, the defender came inside Jamari to make the tackle ultimately. Third and four, they're calling it. Ball spotted on the 26. TR back, looks, throws, caught. England's got a first down. Over the 35 to the 37. And we saw that sidearm motion again from TR. Hacker checks in, Barrero comes out on first down. Doesn't really matter how you get it there, just get it just there, right? Just get it there. Yep, find that passing window, find that, that arm action, that arm angle to get it to. And TR did a nice job there, knowing where to get to. Double, I'm sorry, twins left, single wide right. 
TR up the middle, breaks a couple tackles, and is close to another first down. And he's got it. They're moving the chains. Good job keeping his legs yeah, moving. Yeah, watch this play. The play little there. It looks like they're going to toss it. Boom! They string the defense out to their to the defense's right, and Tr ends up tucking it in, in for the first down. Ten yards later, but a nice job that little play action. It looks like they're going to run toss to the outside. Decides to keep it. Well executed. And you saw Lucas Bowman when he got to Tr. He didn't try to wrap him up. He tried to hit him with a shoulder. Lake. And Coach Bell is taking a timeout. And they're going to look at T.R. Hill's ankle, it looks like. Everybody crowds in around him. Chelsea Hanning is down looking at him. Hey, the second half scoreboard is underwritten by Cutter Rug Flooring, a local family-owned and operated small business proudly serving Lake Orion and surrounding communities. Fully licensed and insured, they specialize in carpet, re carpet restretching, flooring repairs, as well as full service installation and sales. And I'll finish the read after this play. So first and 10, Vasquez in motion, Handoff to Barrero. They're giving him two up to the 49. And Cutter Rug Flooring has a mobile showroom that brings the shopping experience right to your door for your convenience. Call them at 586 531 A.J. Catanacci stays in and splits to the right. England back in, split wide left with Vasquez in the slot. Backs in an off offset eye. T.R. got a little opening. He's up near the 46-yard line of Clarkston. It'll be third down and three. You early on, you call a timeout early in the second half, and you think you think to yourself, boy, why, why, why wasting it? And it wasn't a waste. That was a situation yeah. where because TR was down, you had to take the timeout to make sure he could get back on the field. Otherwise, you got to pull him out of play if you don't use that timeout. I think they retaped him. Handoff up the middle, first down, Dragons. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Well, if I go by the head linesman, yeah, but yeah, it's going to be a first down. Yep, move the chains. There you go. You are correct. The eagle eye from up here, aren't? And of course, one of the Clarkson players has got to look to make sure they can't throw the challenge flag. At some at some some point in time down the road, there's going to be the the, the laser yes. first down markers are going to come it's to the high coming. school level. You know, it's coming. <laughs> and the way that video is proficient in most high school stadiums, they may try replay sometimes. That's right. Handoff up the middle. Dom Diego Hawkins. On the run, got nine. Quick hitter. Nice hard run. They're, Boom. Giving, him, they're giving him a first down. Just shot right up the middle. He saw that gap, didn't see, yeah. need to see much of a green grass in front of him, but as soon as he saw it, bam, he's through there for 10 yards and that, a first down. That's the second time he's done that quick hitter. Boy, he hits that hole quickly. So first and 10. TR up the middle. Got five. They're going to give him four. Brody Rodder tripped him up. Yeah. Got to about three. 
Ball's marked on the 30 as we near six and a half to go in the third. Tier does a nice job of just being patient. Let the play yes. action, the flow go one way and, and let your, your, your hole open up and find, find a way to find you know, three yards in that case. But he really has done a nice job, does a nice job of being patient and letting the hole develop. Jamari Cooper split near side. Dom Diego Hawkins again, and he got no gain. They stoned him. Yeah, T.J. Schaefer came off the edge, his defensive end position, and uh, just scraped down. There was a down block by the, the tackle. He scraped off the backside of the, uh, the, the down block of the tackle and made the nice play. Anglin comes back in, out. 10 play drive to this point. Yes. That is a great start yes. for the Dragons. Mac Big third down play though. McIntyre's, two tight ends. McIntyre's lined up on the left. Pressure, throws, caught. Rochelo, no one's going to get him. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Ryan Rochelo from 30 yards out. I tell you what, I don't know if we're going to be able to see that on a replay, but there's two Dragon wide receivers in the same vicinity that Rochelo just came across the middle and almost took it away from the other, it looked like. But nonetheless, perfect play. 30 yards later, touchdown Dragons. Hoffman in for the extra point. Vasquez will hold. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 5.22 to play in the third. It's now 19 to 10 Dragons. Right there, two receivers in the same area. All right, yeah. Vasquez and Rochelo, and I don't know if there's a, nonetheless, you look at it on film tomorrow, you're gonna enjoy it, but they're gonna talk about the, the, the spacing right there between those two receivers, because I guarantee you they weren't supposed to be in that same vicinity. And you look at those long strides of Rochelo. <laughs> That's what six foot five gets you. Absolutely. We're, again, we're at practice again on Wednesday, and the first practice I've been to, to all year, and, and, and uh, frankly, the first Dragons football game I've seen this year, and you, you look at about on the practice field, and it just towers over others, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Hoffman has it teed up. 11 play, 80 yard drive to start the second half time of possession. Six minutes, 38 seconds. High end over end kick. Taken a yard deep and it'll come out to the 20. Hey filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 17th at the ONTV studio located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given their requirements, which include a prop, location, and a line of dialogue that is to be included in their 10-minute film. You will be have until 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 22nd, to submit the film, and we'll finish after this play. Clarkston comes out, twins left, single wide right, from the Gun. And stoned at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Griffin Bowman had nowhere to go. One, two, three, four. There's about five hats there. Yeah. Five green hats there. Lane Garris leading the charge. McIntyre was in there. Anyhow, to finish the Wildwood Film Festival, on Wednesday the 23rd, films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m. at the Oxford 7 Cinema in Oxford. Call ONTV at 248-393-1060. Trips right, single wide left. Handoff up the middle, got a little seam, got maybe seven. It'll be set, third down and three. Alex Hensley on the stop. It's a big third down play for Clarkson. It's one of those situations where 
boy, oh boy, you'd think they've got to convert here. Yeah. Otherwise, you give the Lake Orion back with decent field position, up 10. Third down. Same Hand call. Up, up the middle. Yeah, he got it. He did same got exact it by call. Body yard. Now it's Hensley again on the stop. Somebody's down for Clarkson. Is it yep. Bowman? No, I think he's just tying his shoe. Oh, yep, you're right. Yep, it is Bowman. He's carried the first. Which one? Griffin. Yeah, okay. Griffin, yep. <laughs> he's carried the ball the first three plays of this drive. It's still hard to see in high school playing player wearing zero. We see it in college where anything yep. goes. NFL has had it. And uh, looking to throw. Nope, he's going to get spun down after no gain. Disciplined dra dragon defense. They ran that play earlier yep. and had a little bit more success. They stayed home that time on the far side of the field. Well done, well executed by the Dragons. So second down and 10. Look at him stay home up on top. One, two, three Dragon hats there. Wazenko, the quarterback, is trying to make block three guys. You can't do yeah. that. So from trips right again on second and 10. Coming around right in. He's got a seam. He's run out of, brought down after a first down, and it looked like there was a mugging back here about the 40. Everybody on this side of the field was yelling hold. Nice block right there, got the edge. You got a lead blocker up front here. And you mean that hold right there? And, or yeah, that hold? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of give and take yeah. right there. Good job of keeping his feet moving, jumping over the tackler. So first and 10 from the 43 as we approach two minutes to go in the third. Up the middle again, big hole. First down to the 25. 18-yard gain and by Bowman. Bowman again. And his offensive line opened up a cavern yeah, for him. Yeah, right but he ran right, right past two Dragon defenders yeah. that were almost untouched. <laughs> can't do that. That's the tackling that Coach Bell yep. talked about. You got to have it. You can't be lunging for ball carriers. So first and 10, now trips left, single wide right. Hand off again, bounces it outside, brought down. 35, Alex Hensley just yep. grabbed a hold of an ankle and waited for help. As I'm watching the play from up here, you're right. Bowman did bounce. I'm thinking he's got some, some yardage, but Hensley's right yeah. there to make the play. Again, backside homes, staying home, being disciplined. Well done by number 35. It was a good job for Bowman to bounce. There was nothing where, where he wanted to go. So second down, they gave him no gain. Handoff. Around this side, breaks one tackle, trying breaks another one, and is gang tackled about the 18-yard line. That's going to be the last play. It is the third quarter. That was a quick third quarter. That was 
it is, it is almost a, it is an exercise in futility to try to read this Clarkston Ross, Rasta, roster. So we will switch ends after three. It is 20 to 10, Lake Orion. Hank Horning on this drive, or this drive so far. 31 rushing yards and two carries. They are they are getting chunk yards. Yeah, no, they are. Griffin right. Bowman, he's he's had five carries so far in the, in this drive. 19, 23, 30 yards. So, um, yeah, it's killing a lot of clock. There's only been two. There was only two series in the first. Or sorry, in the third quarter. Yeah. At 11 yard or 11 play drive by Lake Orion, and then Clarkson so far has finished off the rest of the third quarter. But you know what? Lake Orion will give them field goals all night long as long as they're scoring touchdowns. Absolutely. So we are going to have a third down and five. The ball's on the 20. Big test for this Dragon D on third down. 20's left, single wide right. Up the middle, not gonna get there. The Dragon defense holds. No gain, maybe a half a yard. It's gonna be fourth down and five. Looks like they're gonna yeah. kick a field goal. Looks like they're sending a field goal unit in. It will be a 37 yard attempt. Tell you what, he kicked that, I know it was a shorter field goal attempt to end the first half, but he's got a big leg. He boomed yes, that he thing. Does. Yeah. Adam O'Neill. Sorry, Aiden O'Neill, excuse me. Aiden, yeah. Ball is down. Kick is up. Long enough and good. 11 09 to play in the fourth. It's now 20 to 13, Lake Orion. And thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion Sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $12 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. These young Dragon broadcasters hopefully will go on to greater things and go to college in mass media and be the voices of the future. O'Neill, high short kick, taken at the four by Vasquez, coming up to the 20, breaks it outside, got one man to beat, and takes it out of bounds near the 30. They're gonna mark him down at the 31, and Dragons will take over first and 10. And this would be, a Dragon score here would be huge. And a drive 638 like they had last time would be huge too. Yes. <laughs> so TR leads them out. Jamari Cooper and Kyle Anglin split left. Two backs in the backfield. Vasquez and Ferrero. Handoff up the middle for a couple. Vasquez on the carry. They're going to give him one. It'll be second and nine. It's 
That's a generous nine. Yeah. <laughs> Where did, oh, they, they did start. Did they start at the 31? Yes, they did. Yes. Jamari Cooper on the pitch. Gets near the first down and is tackled. Good tackle there on secondary because Jamari had a head of steam going. It is going to be third down and one. Boom. You see Bowman, Griffin Bowman comes up field going to attack TR and then TR sees that and he pitches off that pressure by Bowman. Co Cooper downfield for a nine yard gain. Brady Beck on the tackle for Clarkston. Third down and one. Inside the 10 minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Jamari splits wide right. Jackson Vasquez in the slot. Ah, they had, uh, they're misaligned and yep. they had to call their second time out. Vasquez was in the slot, which means that Jamari had to be on the line and Jamari was not on the line he was looking at Coach Bell, and Jackson was signaling, get up, get up, get up. So Coach Bell did the wise thing and called a timeout. Yeah, especially you know, on third and one, you don't want to take the delay. You don't yeah. want to be misaligned. You don't want any penalty to make it third and six. So you, you hate to do that. You had to take that timeout early in the second half and the early in the third quarter when TR went down. But uh, you hope things like that don't come back to haunt you. Dragons go on the road next week to Farmington. We'll be back in two weeks to welcome in the Celine Hornets. One of the top programs in the state ran into a ineligible player situation this year and had to forfeit two wins, was it? Three wins, three the wins. their first three wins of the season. Yeah. They are looking to appeal strongly to the MHSAA. They're going through that process right now. And Tommy Carr has stepped in and they haven't missed a beat. Third and one, TR up the middle. I don't think he got it. It's close. Boy, they look at that, that forward progress. Yeah. I believe did he did get it. The head, yep, they're yes. moving the chain. Yes, he did. And Coach, Coach Pinner is beside himself. He was right there, and right. he's, oh. he's letting headlinesman Mike Dunn know it. He walked right there to the line to gain. TR knew where he was going. Sure. It's all he needed that. It's all he needed. <laughs> so first and 10 from the 41. It goes without saying, that was a huge gain. Yes. Third and one. Work some more clock. 20s right, Barrero. Did he oh, get, that, even get back to the was, line of scrimmage that there? That was Dom Diego Hawkins on that carry. He did not, know. He did not get back to the line of scrimmage. He comes out, Barrero checks back in on second down. Methodical, deliberate, yeah. secure the football, protect the football. You know the Wolves are gonna be going in, working to try to strip, keep the guy up, get the uh, second guy in to try to strip the football. Secure, secure, secure. Pass, Vasquez got it, slips the tackle, can't slip the second. He stopped for no gain. I've noticed since the Dragons called that timeout and they huddled up around T.R. Hill, he has not run the ball. But he may have tweaked an ankle. A lot of open space, but they got that ball fairly quick, but Lucas Bowman did a nice job from his safety position. And to hold him up, Vasquez up with no gain. So third and 10. Two wide, two running backs in the backfield. TR rolling left, looks, throws. Incomplete. Over on the far sideline. It'll be fourth down. 
Again, they run that little comeback route to the outside. Even if that ball was there, even if that ball was caught, I don't think he would have been. No, I think he'd I think been, been short of the yeah. line to gain. So Will Hoffman back in punt formation. Trey Pakmara and Austin Kahn are the gunners. And a bad punt off his foot. Oh, my goodness. They're going to mark him. The punt going out of bounds at the Clarkston 44-yard line. So, yeah, about a 10-yard punt. So Clarkston will take over first and 10 from their 44-yard line. 7.17 to go. Can you feel the tension on both sides of the field I, just kind of rise a I little can, bit? I can, and I can hear the stands on this <laughs> side starting to get loud. First and 10. Hand off off the right side for about six. Lucas Bowman on the carry. And Alex Hensley on the stop there. Gave him six. It, it'll be second and four from midfield. We're inside seven minutes to play. Dragons holding on to a seven point lead. Bowman again, short of the first down. It'll be third and about a yard and a half. Lane Garris on the stop. They have to get to the 46. The ball is marked at about the 47 and a half. It's four down territory, I don't care. Here we go, trips left, single wide right, single back in the backfield on third down. He may have gotten it with his, with his backward lean. Yeah, no. The, the Sheffield had him in the backfield, but as, yeah. as he was attacking the backfield, watch right here, he spins him forward, and I think yeah. that's where they got the first down. Yep. Sure it is. So first and 10 from the Dragon 46. The clock restarts, 540 to go in the game. Trips left, single wide right from the pistol. Keeper. He's in the open field. One man to beat, and he's going to be brought down, and a late flag coming in. Late flag. That might be on Clarkston. I don't know that that was a, a face mask pen. I think that might be on Clarkston. He was tackled around the shoulder pads. I, you know, it was not close to a horse collar. It's a spot foul and they've got the flag holding against Clarkston. Wow. Still first down. Yeah. Nice run by Wojenko, and again, we talked about that at the beginning. The second half, you gotta be able to stop him, and he's gashing them with big plays like he has all night. He does not look like There's a... the hold right there. Yeah. Number 19, Benny Adams blocking downfield, thinking he was blocking downfield, got the hold on Trey Pacmara. Pacmara. They're gonna hold while they reset the chains. First and 10 from the 21. Jenko, he's trapped, he's going down. 
good swarm defense by the Dragons. And you're right, Chris, they hold their, they held their positions. And he just had no place to go. Yeah, loss of one in the play. We'll take that. Give him a yard loss. And the clock continues to run. Lake Orion has one timeout left. Clarkston has their full contingent of three. Zinko's got over 100 yards rushing so yeah. far. You're right, it's hard to tell. You wouldn't know he's a sophomore. No. Handoff coming around this side. Dragon defense has him again. Great job. They lose two more yards. Napchuk, Hensley, and others back there. Got great penetration. The jet motion coming from far side to near side. The penetration forced the, the back at that time. Hank Horning backwards. Two yard loss. Big time. Third down and 13. Third and 13 from the 25. Field goal doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do you any doesn't good. Doesn't do him any good, no. Third down, two seconds left, one second left. And they're gonna call him for delay a game. Did they get a timeout in? No, they no. did not. That'll back them up another five. And Coach Pinner is not happy. What? Oh, Clarkson yep. did call a timeout. But still, Coach Pinner is not a happy man right now. Well, Doug. <laughs> how, did, how did you write this script tonight? Um, not like this. You know, it's the, the first quarter was the barn burner. The second and third quarter was between the 30s. Mm -hmm. And now we're setting up a third and 13, 317 to go. Dotchek back to pass, looking. Down he goes. Jacob Escobedo got him. Loss of one on the play. It is fourth down and 12, they're calling it. So. It's just relentless, stay on, stay on, stay on. Never lose sight of the quarterback. He's being held off the edge. Never lost sight of Wojenko. Great job keeping him they're under gonna, wraps. They're gonna go for it. Fourth down and 12. The end zone is 24 yards away. And Clarkson's gonna call timeout. That's their second. Each team has one timeout left. And the chess game continues. <laughs> Defense coordinator Brad Purdy. And all he's in and Coach Blackstock's out there, and I know what Coach Blackstock's saying. Just keep everything in front of you. Keep everything in front of you. Keep it in bounds. Uh, yeah, all, I mean, I guess, yeah. I guess I'm, I'm, if it's turnover on downs, it, the stock clock stops anyway. But bottom line is, yeah, keep everything in front of you. Know where the chains are. Know where that line to gain is at the 11-yard line, 12-yard line-ish. So here we go. Fourth and 12. Trips to the left, single wide right. Now motion far side. 
Stop check back, looks, throws. He's open. Flag. The pass is incomplete. A late flag comes in in the end zone. And, a and there's a flag down at the 33 yard line. They might both be on Lake Orion. They might be. You might have a roughing the passer and a pass interference. Let's see. Two flags are down at the 33 yard line and a flag is down in the east corner of the north end zone. That's, uh, that was before the timeout. Yeah. Yep. Here we go. Four man rush. Yep. Oh boy, yep. Yep. A late and then on a the hit right event. there. Yep. They got, uh, looks like based on that, two penalties yeah. on the Dragons. Which is also going to be an auto, well, it's going to be 15 yards, which will be a first down. Yeah, the ball's clearly released by Wazenko. Yeah. So we'll see referee Fred Castleviteri. He's going to come over and talk to Coach Bell. Said earlier today, Lake Orange did a nice job all season long of not having many penalties. They've had two penalties yeah. to this time. Well, you know what? These might be the biggest of all. Yeah. Offsetting penalties. Penalties offset, let's do it again. Well. How about that? <laughs> so, for all the tension we just built up three minutes ago, we're gonna do it again. <laughs> we are in a fourth and 12 from the 24. It's like back in the day when you were playing sports and say it's a do-over. Yeah. That's basically what it is here. Now he's going to go over and explain it to Coach Pinter. This is where I, I wish in high school football they'd announced the number who the player or the, the penalty yeah. was against. I mean, I, I, I get it, but at the same time, I'd like to see if we went back to that replay, I'd like to see where that hold was because there yes. was clearly, clearly a late yes. hit. Because they called a penalty also in the end zone, correct? They did. So, and so did they miss the late hit? Here's the okay. One. Let's see what we got. Wozenko drops back to pass. Oh, Being, there it is, right there. Okay. Yeah. There was two flags, and I don't know the. Where's the? You're seeing the hold where? They never called the roughing the passer. You're right. They had to hold on Clarkston. And then, wow. No, they didn't. Yeah. Now I think they're talking to Clarkston because Clarkston's complaining about that same thing. Yeah. What about the calls in the end zone? If these offset near the line of scrimmage or five yards back from the line of scrimmage, that's one thing, that's fine. Yeah. But you forgot about those in the end zone. Now he's gonna come over and talk to Coach Bell again. And I know this drives an officiating crew crazy. They wanna be invisible and to have these situations where they have to come back and forth and explain it to the coaches. There will be a post-mortem by this official officiating crew tonight. Now can you read lips? That becomes uh -huh. the question, right? It's not like as Coach Campbell does in the Appleby commercial and hold it over. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
when it comes to situations like this, if you're Coach Bill, you want to make very clear what the words are to Absolutely. those officials, right? Absolutely. You don't want to hide that behind a play uh, sheet. You are there. <coughs> well, Coach Bell saying he's declining something. I don't think there's anything to decline. No. If head officials got to make a second call. Well, let's see. No? We've got five Clarkston coaches, and they're, they're out to the numbers. This is where we need our sideline reporter to get us the inside yeah. scoop, right? We can only speculate from way up here. Coach Pinter is livid. And three other coaches are giving it to the headlinesman, Mike Dunn. Careful, coach, don't throw your hat. So the end result is it's still fourth down and 12. That's. they're consistent in their call. So fourth and 12, we have trips to the right, twins to the left. Empty backfield for Clarkston on fourth down. Dragons in a prevent look on defense. Pressure, flag down, incomplete. I thought I saw a flag You come did in. on this near sideline, Dragon sideline. As long as it wasn't offsides, Dragons. Let's see. Dragons are celebrating as if it's theirs. Illegal motion is declined. Dragons ball. Wow. And in the meantime, that ate, ate up two minutes of, of clock. We have 2.14 to go. The Dragons have the ball on their own 24, up by seven. Run the ball, protect the ball, get a first down, game over. Yes, make them use their last time out. Single wide out is Amari Cooper, Jamari Cooper split left. I'm sorry, split right. TR up the middle. For about three. And Clarkston is taking their final time out. You think back to the, the second time out that Clarkston took, I mean, it was, they had to get it called before the, the play clock went down. Yeah. And you, 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 that's a big time out to have to take. It is. They are out of timeouts, the Dragons have won. We have 2.09 to play. Hey folks, this is homecoming. We, we think we have 2.09 to play. Yeah. <laughs> Stranger things have happened in oh this boy. rivalry. If you recall a playoff game we witnessed yes. here last year. Yes. Just when you thought you had seen it all, I, will, I won't reenact that that uh, uh, that game as as great as as great of a game as it was. The right. Dragons have a second and seven. You're right, Chris. The first down, the game's over. Tight formation, two tight ends. Oh, 
Handoff up the middle is Barrero. He got a couple. It's going to be third down, and they're going to call it seven. Got to get to the 34-yard yeah. line. Barrero checks out. Clarks has got every got eight guys in the box. Yeah. You run something wide, you run a little bit more clock. And Lake Orion's gonna call a timeout. 120 to go. Again, Doug, you mentioned it a couple times already tonight. This is another part of the chess match, yeah. the cat and mouse game, if you will, that, that the coaches have to navigate. So here's what we've got. Both punters have shanked a punt tonight. So if the Dragons don't make it and they run the clock down on fourth down and punt it, if they can pin them deep, then you may have ball game over because I can't see them making a, a drive like that. If, but you, oh boy, this is this is <laughs> where, yeah, Coach Bell used to say with Nate Recknagel, how does he know how to do this? I said, because we've talked about it. <laughs> and you've got to talk about situations that come up and how to keep your cool. So it's third and six. Twins right, single wide left. TR up the middle. He's not going to get there. He got to the 31, and it's going to be fourth and three. You know they were just going to keep it in TR's hands. They can run this right. clock down to about 33 seconds, 34 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Possibly take a delay a game, let the clock run down, and then punt from there. Yep. All right, so there's your delay a game penalty. The ball will be moved back to the 26. They're going to add, have to have a second or so to the clock, I think, right? They 30. Not. It shows 32.2 seconds. Neil Hoffman need lost a clean his snap. Name. You need a clean catch. You need yep. a clean punt. You Will, gotta contain. Will Hoffman lost his nameplate, but we know who he is. Fourth and seven. High kick. Wow. Takes a Lake Orion bounce. Taken and dropped on the 35 yard line, which was a smart play because it stopped the clock. Well, luckily, luckily Brady Beck got that bounce because I'm thinking yeah. initially, why is he letting that ball bounce? Because if it had that ball bounce a different way, yep. that clock's going to continue to run. He got a nice, fortunate hop. But unfortunately for them, the Dragons were right there to ready to make the play. 21.4 seconds to go. Lake Orion, 20. Clarkston, 13. Could you write it up any better? Listen Clarkston. to the crowd. Yeah. Trips right, single wide left. One back in the backfield. Step check, rolling right, looking, throwing. Complete. Nice catch, Brady back on the sideline. At side the line. Lake Orion 45, the clock stops while well, they reset the chains. 13.1 seconds left. Looking, throwing, hits, he throws incomplete. Great pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Nap check. Nap check. Oh. 
Incomplete pass, 8.5 seconds to go. It's second down and 10. Brandon Nepchek caught him right in the ribs. So 8.5 to go. Trips left, single wide right. Dragon defensive backs are back at the 20-yard line. They're 25 yards deep. Looks, throws. Penalty flag on the ground. Pass is incomplete. Let's check the flag out. I don't know. 3.2 oh. seconds are showing Hold on the, on the edge. Holding on Clarkston. The pass was incomplete. Yeah, the, the inc yeah, it was an incomplete pass. Yeah. They'll, Coach Bell's winding his hand, thinking that the clock should no, be going, but no, it's no, an incomplete it'll pass. It'll start on the stat. Yep. It is, the ball is on the Clarkston 45 yard line. Clarkston is 65 yards away from tying the game with 3.2 seconds left. Here's your ball game, folks. Back, flag on the play. Looks, throws, incomplete. A f another flag came down. The line judge threw a flag at the snap. We may have another roughing the passer penalty against Lake Orion. Let's see what we got. The penalty's offset, we'll do it again. The game is over. The Lake Orion Dragons have beaten. What? And Coach Pinner is irate. And there's a late flag thrown. Wow. In a game that had a little bit of everything. The Lake Orion Dragons beat the Clarkston Wolves on homecoming night 20 to 13. We'll pick it up down on the field for post game after we catch our breath. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television and on the NFHS streaming service.
Down on the field after a very thrilling 20 to 13 Lake Orion win on homecoming and Chris, you couldn't have scripted it any other way. What uh, what a way to celebrate. What a way to start the week and the weekend and the, all the festivities, beating your rival on homecoming. You know, you look at the homecoming games, right, and you, it's like, why do you schedule components like this on homecoming? Yeah. Well, this is why. This is why, because all the time and the effort that you put in all week long, all season long, to play that team up the road and come out on top, it, it makes the, the experience for the kids, the coaches, the community, that much more rewarding. And yeah, there, there, was a, there were some extracurriculars, there were some late hits. The officials were busier than they thought they'd be. Uh, I was talking with the referee before and I said, think of this like a playoff game because playoff games are usually pretty clean football. Well, tonight we had some hiccups in the road, but still, it was a win. Lake Warren will take the win. I noticed Clarkston's coaches were going ballistic at the end of the game. That's the emotion of football. It's the emotion of football. It's the emotion of the rivalry. It's the emotion of the fact that, that you know, playoff points and, and seeding for, again, two weeks down the road when, when, when the, uh, the selection show takes place. But it's all those things combined. But it's, it's all because of the investment these yeah. coaches, these kids, these parents put into this game and, and the, the fun in and around the game. That's why it's so everyone's so invested and so emotional. Yeah. And, you know, they started in August. They've been doing this practically every day since August. You know, everyone talks about the coaching staff and you know how good it is. And a lot of times, you and I know the time that it takes to put into a program to get it to our the status that Lake Orion it is. It's a lot of work by the coaches. It's a commitment by both the players and the coaches and the families. Absolutely, and that's, again, the, the commitment to sports. That's, that shows you the value of sports. Um, whether you win or lose when it's all said and done, it's probably not the big thing. It's, it's the commitment to life lessons. It's, the, it's, it's this right here. Yeah. These relationships, these are memories these kids, these coaches are going to remember for the rest of their lives, and that's what high school sports is yep. all about. Yep, and it still happens. Five years from now, two guys will meet somewhere. Yeah, I went to Lake Orion. I played football at Lake Orion. I played football at Clarkson. Yeah, we beat you on our yeah. home ground. I mean, it re- just happened. You remember the dates. You remember the scores. You remember the plays. You remember all those things combined. And, and uh, the kids don't know that now. They don't understand that now. But as you get to be our ages and, and we experience and see what's happening out here, that's when you, you, we, we have a tendency to look back and say, you know what, remember when. And uh, they're going to be enjoying this one tonight. We are, as you can tell over our shoulders, we are kind of in the middle. And there's Coach Bell. Congratulations. Way to go. Nice job. Thank you. Well done. So I asked you this two weeks ago. Pretty good game, huh? Oh, it's it's Lake Warren Clarkson. Yeah. You know, who's got the ball last. And and, uh, I was really proud of our defense. Our defense really played well. You know, I thought we had some drives where we could have gone up a couple scores and really taken some pressure off our defense, and we didn't do it, but they stepped up. So, you know, we made enough plays offensively to score some points, but, you know, defensively, you know, I can't say enough good things about them. For the, the improvement from last week to this week, tackling, covering, we put pressure on the quarterback. Yeah. Too many penalties are late. We got to stay off the quarterback. But they, they just, they did, Coach uh, Purdy and his crew did a great job, and the kids executed it. Yeah, I talk about that pressure because Wozenko did a nice job running the ball. He had over 100 yeah. yards rushing. but And you you came into tonight's game with only three quarterback sacks. But you had a couple tonight, but it was your pressure on a fairly consistent basis that, that threw him off his game a little bit. And talk about that. Absolutely. And it I, you know, goes back to Coach Purdy as well. You know, He brought a few extra guys, you know, a couple line stunts up front. But it's also the guys just playing hard. I mean, the guys are just, just getting it done. And sometimes you got to win your one-on-one matchups, and they're able to do that. Farmington next week, the league schedule is over. You, uh, Oxford took the title. Congratulations to them. Farmington comes in next week. Is it hard to look past them to Celine in no. two weeks? No, Farmington, they're, they're a lot, they were young last year and they're much improved. I mean, they're at the top of their division. They've got players, we're going down there. You always worry about a letdown and guys saying, okay, we're playing a, a blue division team. No, we, we have got to go down to Farmington. Now it's about win as many games as you can to try to get a home game and make sure you're punch, you know, five wins 
looks pretty good playoff wise, but six for sure we're going to be in. So we, we got to just keep stacking them up right now. You give them 24 hours to enjoy it and it's back to work. You got it. Absolutely. A lot, a lot of football has to be played. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Well, that'll wrap it up from the field. We will be back in two weeks when the Celine Hornets come to town. Chris, another night like this. Yeah. This could be this could be the end of a great season in two weeks. I uh, let's hope not. Let's hope not. Just keep it rolling. Just keep playing like they did tonight. Complete mistake-free football. Stay injury-free. All those things combined, and uh, um, just keep chipping away one game after another. And you, you just never know what can happen. That's the great thing about high school football. So that'll wrap it up from our from the field for our producer director Joey Tysick, our entire ONTV student crew tonight. Joe Johnson is always getting mugged by the posse on the sideline, still coming through with some of the best shots in football. I'm Doug Corliss. Thank you for watching. Good night, everyone. Enjoy homecoming.